How's it going, people? Well, wow, I forgot I bought this. It's hard cider with raspberry flavor. It's supposed to be dry. We'll see if I like it. I don't know. It's time to try something new. Yeah, okay, it's like rose color. Whew. All right. We're done with Alma Jr. pitching out uh, Coriantum. Corianton. One of those. So now we got some. Uh, a little bit of action coming up. Sort of. Alright, chapter 43. Another Lamanite invasion. They have a lot of those. Armies of Moroni and Lehi surround and overpower the enemy. Maybe I shouldn't have read that. Kind of gave it away, didn't I? Alright, first one. And now, it came to pass... Kind of like a, a champagne or something. Real sweet. That the sons of Alma did go forth among the people to declare the word unto them, and Alma also himself could not rest, and he also went forth. Yeah, they couldn't have said that a better way, a shorter way. Too. Now we shall say no more concerning their preaching. Oh, damn! I, well, we got we got a really a mega dose <laughs> past six chapters, so yeah, I'm ready for some bloodshed now. Yeah, except that they preached the word. Which one? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, and the truth, according to the spirit of prophecy and revelation. And they preached after the holy order of God by which they were called. Three. And now I return to the account of the wars between the Nephites and the Lamanites in the 18th year of the Judges, which is about B.C. 74. For, for behold, it came to pass oh, interesting. It's kind of like a can't place it. It's kind of like Kool-Aid almost. That's what it is. Not too bubbly. Yeah, for, for behold, it came to pass that the Zoramites and the Lamanites, therefore, in the commencement of the 18th year, the people of the Nephites saw that the Lamanites were coming upon them. Therefore, they made preparations for war. Yea, they gathered together their armies in the land of Jershom. Five, and it came to pass... And it came to pass that the Lamanites came with their thousands. And they came into the land of Antionum, which is the land of the Zoramites. And a man by the name of Zerahimna. Zerahimna was their leader. Six, and now, as the Amalekites were of a more wicked, murderous disposition than the Lamanites were, in and of themselves, therefore Sarahimna appointed chief captains 
over the Lamanites, and they were all Amalekites and Zoramites. Seven. Now, this he did that he might preserve their hatred towards the Nephites, that he might bring them into subjugation to the accomplishment of his designs. Eight. For behold, his designs were to stir up the Lamanites to anger against the Nephites. This he did that he might usurp the power over him, over them, and also that he might gain power over the Nephites by th by bringing them into bondage. Nine. And now the design of the Nephites was to support their lands and their houses and their wives and their children, that they might preserve them from the hands of their enemies, and also that they might preserve their rights and their privileges, yea, and also their liberty. I should have been waving a flag right now. I got one on my window. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And also their liberty that they might worship a god according to their desires. 10. For they knew that if they should fall into the hands of the Lamanites, that whosoever should worship God in spirit and in truth, the true and living God, the Lamanites would destroy. 11. Yea, and they also knew the extreme hatred of the Lamanites towards their brethren, who were the people of anti-Nephi-Lehi, who were called the people of Ammon, which is a lot shorter, more efficient, since you're writing on gold, but instead they sing both names together each time. It's like, what, supposed to be two biblical or nephiacal gold book Bible dude guys, you know, Moroni and Mormon, right? Or Mormon and Moroni, right? So, it's a big mix-up here. Why do they have to repeat themselves all the time when they know it's going to be put together? They're prophets! They shouldn't have to repeat themselves so much, because they should know they said enough already. And they would not take up arms. Yea, they entered into a covenant that they would not break it. Therefore, if they should fall into the hands of the Lamanites, they would be destroyed. Why, when they make such great slaves? I mean, come on. They're so docile. They're already broken in by their... They're mind control overlords. A little self esteem up. Smack that down. <laughs> Twelve. And the Nephites would not suffer that they should be destroyed. Therefore, they gave them lands for their inheritance. Thirteen. Just because it's all right. Not my thing. Really. Therefore, they gave them lands for their inheritance. Thirteen. And the people of Ammon did give unto the Nephites a large portion of their substance to support their armies. And thus the Nephites were compelled alone to withstand against the Lamanites, who were a compound of Laman and Lemuel, and the sons of Ishmael, 
and all those who had dissented from the Nephites, who were Amalekites and Zoramites, and also the descendants of the priests of Noah. Not the boat full of animals guy. <laughs> the, the, the wicked king Noah. That barbecue. Fourteen. Now, those descendants were as numerous, nearly as were the Nephites, and thus the Nephites were obliged to contend with their brethren, even unto bloodshed. Finally, fifteen. And it came to pass. Fifteen. And it came to pass, as the armies of the Lamanites had gathered together in the land of Antionum, behold, the armies of the Nephites were prepared to meet them in the land of Jershom. Sixteen. Now, the leader of the Nephites, or the man who had been appointed to be the chief captain over the Nephites. Dash. Now the chief captain took the command of all the armies of the Nephites, and his name was Moroni. Sounds promising. <laughs> 17. And Moroni took all the command and the government of their wars. And he was only twenty and five years old when he was appointed chief captain over the army of the Nephites. Eighteen, and it came to pass And it came to pass that he met the Lamanites. Uh in the borders of Jershom. And his people were armed with swords and with scimitars and all manner of weapons of war. Nineteen. And when the armies of the Lamanites saw that the people of Nephi, or that of Moroni, had prepared his people with breastplates <clears throat> with breastplates and with arm shields, yea, and also shields to defend their heads, and also they were dressed with thick clothing. Twenty. Now the army of Zarahimna was not prepared with any such thing. They had only their swords and their scimitars, their bows and their arrows, their stones and their slings. And they were naked, save it were a skin, which was girded about their loins. Yea, all were naked, save it were the Zoramites and the Amalekites. 21. But they were not armed with breastplates. All right already! God damn! <laughs> Sorry. All right. But they were not armed with breastplates nor shields. Therefore, they were exceedingly afraid of the armies of the Nephites because of their armor, notwithstanding their number being so much greater than the Nephites. 22. But uh, behold, now it came to pass. I had to dress that one up a little bit. Once upon a time it came to pass. Behold, now it came to pass that they durst not come against the Nephites in the borders of Jershom, 
Therefore, they departed out of the land of Andy Onam into the wilderness and took their journey round about in the wilderness away by the head of the river Sidon that they might come into the land of Manti and take possession of the land. For they did not suppose that the armies of Moroni would know whither they had gone. 23. But it came to pass... As soon as they had departed into the wilderness, Moroni sent spies into the wilderness to watch their camp. And Moroni, also knowing of the prophecies of Alma, sent captain wait, sent certain men into unto him, desiring him that he should inquire of the Lord whether the armies of the Nephites should go to defend themselves against the Lamanites. All right, 24. And it came to pass that the word of the Lord came unto Alma, and Alma informed the messengers of Moroni that the armies of the Lamanites were marching round about in the wilderness that they might come over into the land of Manti, that they might commence an attack upon the weaker part of the people. And these messengers went and delivered the message unto Moroni. 25. God, I was feeling that one. Now Moroni, leaving a part of his army in the land of Jershom, Damn. Lest by any means a part of the Lamanites should come into that land and take possession of the city, that the remaining part of his army marched over into the land of Manti. Well, fuck, why didn't you just have people there already? I mean, you knew they were a bunch of pussies. I mean, pacifists. 26. And he caused that all the people in that that quarter of the land should gather themselves together to battle against the Lamanites, to defend their lands and their country, their rights and their liberties. Therefore, they were prepared against the time of the coming of the Lamanites. God, man, it's like cut and paste here. 27. This is okay. I don't think I'll buy it again, though. It's overwhelming after a little while, especially if it isn't super cold, which it ain't right now, I guess. 27. And it came to pass that Moroni caused that his army should be secreted in the valley which was near the bank of the river Sidon, which was on the west of the river Sidon, in the wilderness. 28. And Moroni placed spies round about that he might know where the camp of the Lamanites should come. Like he said earlier. He needed to say that again. It'd take a whole fucking verse to do it. And now, as Moroni knew the intention of the Lamanites, that it was their intention to destroy their brethren, or to subject them, to bring them into bondage, that they might establish a kingdom unto themselves over all the land. 30. And he also, know, knowing that it w was the only desire of of the Nephites to preserve their lands and their liberty and their church 
Therefore he thought it no sin that he should defend them by stratagem. Therefore... I'm sorry. I'm gonna fuck you over now. What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry. Therefore, he found by his spies, which course the Lamanites were to take. God damn, how many times are you gonna say that? <laughs> 31. Therefore, he divided his army and brought a part over into the valley and concealed them on the east and on the south of the hill Ripla. 32. 32. And the remainder... Uh, he concealed in the west valley on the west of the river Sidon, and so, and so down into the borders of the land Manti. 33. And thus, having placed his army according to his desire, he was prepared to meet them. 34. And it came to pass, that the Lamanites came upon the north of the hill, which uh, were a part of the army of Moroni, was concealed. And as the Lamanites had passed the hill Ripla and come into the valley, came into the valley, hill Ripla and came into the valley and began to cross the river Sidon, the army which was concealed on the south of the hill, which was led by a man whose name was Lehi. And he led his army forth and encircled the Lamanites about on the east in their rear. 36. And it came to pass... that the Lamanites, when they saw the Nephites coming upon them in their rear, turned about, turned them about and began to contend with the army of Lehi. 37. And the work of death commenced on both sides, but it was more dreadful on the part of the Lamanites, for their nakedness was exposed to the heavy blows of the Nephites. <laughs> with their swords and their scimitars, which brought death about at every stroke. 38. While on the other hand, there was now, and then a man fell among the Nephites by their swords and the loss of blood they're being shielded from the more vital parts of their body, the body, or the more vital parts of the body being shielded from the strokes of the Lamanites by their breastplates and their arm shields and their head plates, and thus the Nephites didn't carry. This is verse 38, by the way. Check it out. <clears throat> uh, the Nephites said, Carry on the work of death among the Lamanites. 39. And it came to pass. Shit, man, I don't think I have enough. <laughs> that Moroni wait and it came to pass that the Lamanites became frightened because of the great destruction among them even until they did begin to flee towards a river Sidon 
40. They, and they, were pursued by Lehi and his men, and they were driven by Lehi into the waters of Sidon, and they crossed the waters of Sidon, and Lehi retained his armies upon the bank of the river Sidon that they could not cross. 41. And it came to pass Forty-one, and it came to pass that Moroni and his army met the Lamanites in the valley on the other side of the river Sidon and began to fall upon them and to slay them. Forty-two, and the Lamanites did, did flee again before them towards the land of Manti, and they were met again by the armies of Moroni. 43. Now, in this case, the Lamanites did fight exceedingly. Yea, never had the Lamanites been known to fight with such exceeding great strength and courage. No, not even from the beginning. 44. And they were inspired by the Zoramites and the Amalekites, who were their chief captains and leaders, and by Zarahemna, who was their chief captain and their chief leader and commander. Yea, they did fight like dragons. They fought like dragons. And many of the Nephites were slain by the, their hands, yea, for they did smite in two many of their head plates, and they did pierce many of their breastplates, and they did smite off many of their arms, and thus the Lamanites did smite in their fierce anger. 45. Nevertheless, the Nephites were inspired by a greater cause, for they were not fighting for monarchy nor power, but they were fighting for their homes and their liberties, their wives and their children, and all, and their all, yea, for their rites of worship and their church. Don't forget to look out for their big brother can't defend himself. Need your help. Uh, 46. And they were doing that which they felt was the duty which they owed to their church. For the Lord had said unto them, and also unto their fathers, that inasmuch as ye are not guilty of the first offense, neither the second ye shall not suffer yourselves to be slain by the hands of your enemies. 47. And again the Lord has said that, <clears throat> ye, sh ye, sh ye shall defend your families even unto bloodshed. Did you say that earlier? Therefore, for this cause, were the Nephites contending with the Lamanites to defend their lands and their country and their rights and their religion. Got to protect that. 48. And it came to pass... that when the men of Moroni saw the fierceness and the anger of the Lamanites, they were about to shrink and flee from them. And Moroni, perceiving their intent, sent forth an 
inspired their hearts with these thoughts. He's got time for a speech in a heated battle. Okay, let's hear it. Yea, the thoughts of their lands and their liberty. Yea, their freedom from bondage. 49. It came to pass. For the last time, I hope. Made it. That they turned upon the Lamanites, and they cried with one voice unto the Lord their God, with a rebel yell, <laughs> uh, for their liberty and their freedom from bondage. Much repetition there. 50. And they began to stand against the Lamanites with power. And in that selfsame hour that they cried unto the Lord for their freedom, the Lamanites began to flee before them. And they fled even to the waters of Sidon. Now the Lamanites were more numerous, yea, but more than double the number of the Nephites. Nevertheless, they were driven in so much that they were gathered together in one body in the valley upon the bank of the river Sidon. Ah. 52. Therefore, the armies of Moroni encircled them about, yea, even on both sides of the river. For behold, on the east were the men of Lehi. 53. Therefore, when Zarahemna saw the men of Lehi on the east of the river Sidon, and the armies of Moroni on the west of the river Sidon, that they were encircled about by the Nephites, they were struck with terror. 54. Now Moroni, when he saw their terror, commanded his men that they should stop shedding their blood. And that's it for 53. But I believe the battle rages on. Look forward to getting back to that, but not tonight. <laughs> anyway, kind of some action. It redolent of, you know, like, I don't know, a little, a little bit of Alexander and a lot of Joshua. Nothing original, cut and paste, repeated verses, uh, almost. I mean, if I really had time to study, I could shred this book easy, but that's not the point of this. I'm just having fun. <laughs> anyway, join me for the next thrilling chapter, because I think actually it has the first scalping. Yeah, first time there's a scalping in North America in the next thrilling chapter. So, please stay tuned. Peace. Fuck out. Have a wonderful whatever fuck it is you're having. <laughs>